Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game Esoteric and a continuing series on getting some classic emulators running on your Steam Deck. And today we have one of my absolute favorite consoles of all time, and that is the 3DO. We'll be teaching you guys how to get games running, dealing with the BIOS files, and all of that fun. Because the Steam Deck is absolutely incredible for emulating classic games. Of course it can do something like No Man's Sky here, but it can do so much more. Before we get too far involved though, do me a huge favor, go down below, hit like and subscribe, that notification bell definitely helps us out. And if you feel so inclined and want to support the channel, you got a Patreon link down below as well. But there's so many fun games on the 3DO, like Gex here. Sure, it's on PlayStation 1 and Saturn, but to me, the 3DO version is still the best, and we want to play it. So the first thing I want to talk to you guys about is just why we're doing this in the first place, because original hardware is not cheap. We need to deal with the BIOS files to start because 3DO is a system that's going to need a BIOS file for your Steam Deck. You have tons of options, but I use PanaFC1.bin. This is just the Panasonic FZ1 model of the 3DO. You can pick whatever you want. I prefer using the FZ1 BIOS. I have the best compatibility luck with it, in my personal opinion. Now, there are other BIOS files that you may want to include on your system. If you scroll down a bit, there's a font ROM. Some games require kanji, so I am suggesting to you to add in the kanji bin file for that ROM dump as well. This will give you 100% compatibility of every game in Japan. Only a few require it, but I'm definitely going to assume you're going to stumble on it and ask me about that. So you will see here we have our two BIOS files, and they are named correctly. Those are the names they need to be. Now, I'll link below to 3DO Dev. He's going to have some BIOS files up there. He is the repository of everything we have. This will take two formats, bin and queue, and it'll also take an ISO file. Now, there is a third format that I never use, but what you really want to worry about is, are the games you're adding on either in bin, queue, or ISO? If they are, I've had 100% compatibility and luck running them. But now that we have all of those files, the games we want to add, as well as the BIOS files we need to run the 3DO on the Steam Deck, just copy them to an external device and go ahead and plug it right into your Steam Deck in desktop mode. Click mount and open and you're going to get everything you need on screen. You'll see all the files we added. The first thing we need to do is get the BIOS files to the correct folder in our MUDEC installation, whether that's an external card or the original hard drive on the unit. Go into the emulation folder, go to BIOS, and put the 3DO BIOS files in the BIOS directory. They do not need to be nested in their own folder. You'll see we put the kanji ROM in there first. Now we're going to come back and get that FC1 BIOS as well. Once we have both of these files in the folder, we know we have all the BIOS files needed to play 3DO games on our Steam Deck. It's as simple as that, but if you don't do this part right, absolutely nothing is going to work because you'll be missing the BIOS files. Now, if you go over to the ROMs folder, luckily 3DO, based on the alphabet, is first, so it's not that hard to find it whatsoever. All you're going to do is make sure you're in emulation, ROMs, and 3DO, and then drag whatever games you want over. I put them in folders. It works organizationally for me, so just go ahead and copy and paste them however you want. Like I said, normally I use a USB dock for this. You can do it via FTP, whatever works works for you. But when you have all your games in the correct ROMs folder and you've got those BIOS files in the correct BIOS folder, we'll go ahead and relaunch MUDEC right here. Now be aware there is a BIOS checker, but for some reason it does not include the 3DO on here. So this is going to be of no use to you. If you don't see 3DO, that doesn't mean it's not working. That means it's just not checking. But the second thing we need to do is go ahead and add those games into our library. So open up Steam ROM Manager, read the description on how it's going to change your controls. And then we can come over here and as long as the 3DO parser is turned on, they all will be by default. Everything is going to ingest perfectly fine. Hit preview, generate app list, and since I have a lot of games on my system right now, there is a handy tab at the top to filter by category and you can pick your system. Again, luckily 3DO is at top. And I love that it found Blade Force's Beyblade V-Force. That's hilarious. For some reason with 3DO, it seems to be reading the bin and the queue as two different games. It's the first time I've seen that. You can remove them from your library, I just don't feel like caring about it, so I left it as is, but save app list, and all of the games you just added that appeared here will now show up on more of the handheld OS look. Go ahead and return to gaming mode and get back to that desktop, and you'll see here under collections we have that 3DO folder now. If you do have two headings, pick the second one, not the first, that's going to be the Q file, but you can manually remove these from your library. And if you've done everything so far up to the tutorial, you will be playing 3DO games on your Steam Deck. And I will say the emulation on Opera here 
is absolutely outstanding. It's running everything exactly how I'd expect 3DO to run. But just because we have the games running doesn't mean we're done yet because there are a ton of different settings we can articulate in the emulator to do different things with 3DO emulation in and of itself. And that is half the fun, not just playing the games on your Steam Deck. But if we go into the RetroArch main menu and we scroll down to get to core options, we're gonna find everything here. Managed core option is where you can select the actual core you're using. And for my money, it's Opera or Nothing on the Steam Deck. Down below, you're going to see the BIOS file selector. I just had you put FC1 on because I think this is fine, but if you added something like the Sanyo Tri or the Gold Star models, you could change the BIOS here to your liking, but FC1 is going to work for you, so just stick with that. Now, if there are a few Japanese games that are not running, this is where you turn on the Japanese kanji ROM. By default, it's off, so if you have a Japanese game that is not working, go ahead and select this and you will be 100% perfectly fine. The fun part is you can also overclock the CPU in different stages. By default, 3DO runs in 12.5 MHz, but you can go all the way up to a 2x multiplier to get 25 MHz out of the system. Some games will have a few glitches with this, some will do some amazing things. But if you go in here and turn on that 1.5 multiplier, you will see here that the game is running a little bit faster and I am doing a 2x internal resolution bump of the polygons that are being drawn. And I will show you how to do that in a second. But there's so many different settings you can articulate. CPU overclock is definitely one you're gonna to wanna to be using a decent amount of the time. But getting back in here, you're gonna see we have different modes. You can run it in PAL 1 or 2, and you also by default have NTSC. I don't know why you'd wanna put it in PAL unless there's a game in compatibility, but that's what I recommend, just leave it in NTSC. Same with the VDLP pixel format, I'll leave it as is. But you'll see here high res cell rendering. By default, it's off. We turn it on if we want to. That gives you a 2x internal rendering of the polygons itself. It will be a little bit slow when you're not overclocking the CPU. But speaking of overclocked CPU, let's take a look at something like Need for Speed. The first game in the series, absolutely incredible, but it's not the fastest thing on 3DO because it was pushing the hardware very hard. But if we bump up that internal CPU clock, suddenly we're getting a much better frame rate out of the game and everything is amazing. Well, until you crash like I do here. And I will say the sound in this emulator is excellent as well. So go ahead and listen for like 45 seconds and I'll talk about more settings. Enjoy. Looks great, sounds great, and plays great. But back into the settings, we're gonna see some more options that we wanna talk about. And one is the non-volatile RAM. It is going to be set per game. So each game is going to get its own NV RAM chip. You can share it. I do not know why you'd want to because it's gonna fill up too quickly. And down below for some games, they do need to have options toggled on. Crash and Burn, Dino Park Tycoon, Microcosm, Alone in the Dark, and Samurai Showdown have some special options. So if you're gonna play those five games, make sure you toggle those on. And don't forget, you never have to back out to the actual Steam OS menu. You can load content directly from RetroArch. And again, 3DO being alphabetically first, it's very easy to find things. Just remember that if you're doing it this way, you want to go ahead and select the Q file. That is what will load it up. But it is just amazing to have 3DO on the Steam Deck. It's an absolutely amazing console that I've always collected for and loved since it came out. And it is doing great here on Steam Deck. Something like Road Rash running at full stock settings is still a ton of fun. But the great thing is, like I said, we can play around with the actual clock speed of the CPU. If we go ahead and bump it up a little bit more, the game is going to be running a little bit smoother. So let's just go down here, go to core options. We'll go ahead and let's say we'll give it like a 1.2 multiplier to start. And the great thing is you don't need to relaunch the game. This is on the fly settings. And if you watch all of that rendering and those buildings are 3D, everything is running smoother and a little bit faster now. But let's bump it up even further. Play around a lot with the CPU core speed. That's gonna make a fundamental difference. Let's bring it to 1.5. And now you're gonna see the game is working perfectly. There are no graphical glitches and everything is so much smoother. I love all the overclock options in the Opera Core. It is outstanding and it makes a big difference because these games ran great when they came out for the hardware. People were impressed with the speed. 
In modern day, it's not as impressive, but we can fix that. And of course, anything that plays Killing Time, one of my favorite games of all time, is going to be high marks for me. And if you've never played this game before, 100% play it. It is my favorite hidden gem of all time. And no, I haven't done a video on it yet, even though I 100% probably should. But there are so many deep cuts on the 3D you can enjoy. Something like Dr. Hauser here came out before something like Resident Evil, and you can 100% see how the developers Resident Evil could have been inspired by a game like this. Because if you can't tell already, it's 3D survival horror with a fixed camera, and a lot of the things that you're used to seeing in Resident Evil are going to be here in Dr. Hauser. Look what happens when this person opens the door, and you tell me if this doesn't look familiar. The 3DO was a hugely influential system, even though some people like to make fun of it. And if you want to leave a comment down below that says 3DO sucks, go ahead. It still helps with my engagement, so I'm happy to read it. But short of that, that is how you get 3DO running on your Steam Deck. And I always use the No Man's Sky star bump here because I just love looking at it at the end. But if you follow this tutorial, you too will be playing 3DO games on your Steam Deck and you'll get to enjoy the full console library. As usual, if you run into any issues whatsoever, leave me a comment down below. And if I have time, I'm happy to sort them out. Short of that, I'll be back next week with more Steam Deck comment. See you guys next time. Bye-bye.